Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at the statement of cash flow activities. And specifically, we're going to be looking at the operating section and to be more specific, using the indirect method. This topic is covered heavily in intermediate accounting and it's a very important topic on the CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where I house my 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including CPA questions. On my website, farhatlectures.com, I, I offer PowerPoint slides, notes, multiple choice, true, false, additional exercises and practices, quasi CPA simulations, and 2,000 CPA questions going to do in this session just go ahead we're going to wet our feet and start to prepare an actual cash flow statement we're going to do it step by step we're going to take baby steps but if you can follow these steps and you can copy them down and understand them you'll be able to prepare and answer any questions about the statement of cash flow so the first thing is what information do you need in order to prepare a cash flow statement one you would need comparative balance sheet and what do we mean by comparative balance sheet it means you need the current year balance sheet number and the prior year so for example if you are preparing year 2020 cash flow statement you will need the 2019 prior year balance sheet this is what we mean by comparative two balance sheet the current year and the prior year two the current year income statement for the income statement you only need the income statement for 2020 you only need one current income statement and you will need selected transaction data simply put additional information you need more information any information that's not captured in the balance sheet it's not captured in the uh, in the income statement okay there are three major steps to prepare the financial statement the first step is to determine the, the change in cash what does that mean determine the change in cash it means look at your cash on the balance sheet look at the current year look at the prior year let's assume the current year your cash is fifteen thousand the prior year the cash is ten thousand what do we say we say that cash increased by five thousand so determine the change in cash because the purpose of the cash flow statement is to explain this increase in cash of five thousand it could be a decrease it doesn't matter you have to compute the change and you have to once you're done with the cash flow statement you have to explain how did that change occur and we'll i'll walk you through this step two determine the net cash flow from operating activities so you have to start with the operating activities and for this session i'm going to be using the indirect method and in the next session i will use the direct method for this steps i'm going to have five sub steps so this is the it, the majority of this lesson will be about this step basically we're going to have five sub steps and step three is to determine the net cash flow from investing and financing we're going to look at a simple example for investing and financing but we'll work a more um, a challenging in, in future session but in this session basically think of it we're going to be focusing on this step not that we're going to be ignoring investing and financing but the focus on is on step two so let's take a look at an example to see how this all fits together the to see how this all fits together so we're looking at the tax consulting company that started january 2019 it issued 60,000 shares for one dollar par value common stock for 60,000. simply put they started the company and the investors invested sixty thousand dollars the company rented its office space furniture and equipment and performed tax consulting services throughout the year so they needed a, a, a space to operate the business so they rented office space furniture and equipment and perform so, some services so we have the comparative balance sheet and notice this is the prior year the prior year did not exist so all the prior year balances are zero now it says january 1st 2019 or it could it could say sometime what it says it says december 31st 2018 so december 31st 2018 and january 1st 2019 technically they're the same thing so this is the prior year and this is the current year balance sheet so basically the current year balance sheet we have cash cash of forty nine thousand. the prior year cash is zero all the prior year balances are zero so this is year one for the company the company did not exist prior so notice everything is increased so cash so basically we could kind of already accomplished step one there was an increase in cash of 49,000 we're gonna to have to explain that increase 
Account receivable is 36,000, it was zero. Accounts payable was 5,000, it was zero. Common stock 60,000, it was zero. Retained earning 20,000, it was zero. Okay, so those are the changes. You have to compute the changes and you're gonna see why shortly for those. Then we have the income statement. We have revenues of 125, operating expenses of 85,000, income before taxes of 40,000, income tax expense of 6,000, and net income is 34,000. Additional information, remember we need two balance sheets, one income statement, and this is the additional information. Examination of selected data indicates that dividend of 14,000 was declared and paid during the year. Okay, let's take a look at step one. And remember, we said step one is to compute the change in cash. We already did this. So the change in cash is 49,000. So basically, we're gonna, do, we're gonna be doing all this work to explain why did that cash increase by 49,000. Step two, determine the net cash flow from operating activities. Remember, I told you step two will have a lot of sub-steps, five sub-steps. So this step is gonna have five additional steps or sub-steps. Okay, we're going to, company must determine revenues and expenses on a cash basis. That's the purpose the oper of the operating cash flow is to look at net income from a cash basis perspective. We're going to eliminate the effect of income statement transaction that do not result in an increase or decrease of cash. So we are going to take out any transaction from the income statement that does not involve any change in cash. Simply put, we're going to convert net income to net cash from operating activities through either the direct or the indirect for our purposes today or for this session we're going to be using the indirect method let me show you a picture of what we're doing so first we compute net income using the accrual basis net income is revenues minus expenses so net income is we have revenues coming in we have expenses deducted and we come up with net income remember those revenues and those expenses are on accrual basis so what we need to do we need to eliminate any non-cash revenue and we need to eliminate any non-cash expenses simply put anything that's non-cash we're only going to keep the cash revenue and the cash expenses anything that's non-cash whether it's a revenue and whether it's an expense will be eliminated we have to take it out now how are we going to do so i'm going to show you how but this is the idea of it and we go from net income to net cash flow from operating activities and this is step two now let's go through the five steps that i told you about in step two and those are very important those are the sub steps in step two okay step one you start with net income because you your, your goal is to convert net income so you will start with net income and net income will be given on the income statement sometimes net income may not be given sometimes you have to you have to analyze retained earnings to come up with net income we'll work an example later on but oftentimes net income is giving step two you're going to deduct any gains and i will explain why later step three you're going to add any losses i will explain this later okay i'm going to add any non-cash expenses such as depreciation amortization write down bad debt expense so step four let's talk a little bit more about step four i'm going to scan the income statement i'm going to look at my income statement and I'm gonna find, I'm gonna look for any non-cash expenses. What are examples of non-cash expenses? Depreciation, depreciation, amortization, write down, bad debt expenses. Those are expenses that I debit an expense, but I credit something other than cash. Let me tell you, for example, depreciation. When you book depreciation expense, you debit depreciation expense, fifteen thousand dollar. You credit accumulated depreciation $15,000 we call this a non-cash expense because we did not credit a cash let's take a look at bad debt when we debit bad debt expense 3,000 we credit allowance for bad debt 3,000 again notice we don't credit we don't credit we don't credit cash so those are considered non-cash expenses those are considered non-cash expenses so what we do is we add those non-cash expenses step five 
Step five, we analyze current assets and current liabilities. Now, hopefully you know what current assets are, account receivable, inventory, prepaid, supplies. Hopefully you know what current liabilities are, accounts payable, short-term notes payable could be considered a current liability, payroll liabilities, uh, taxes payable, rent payable, any short-term liability. Now, analyzing current assets and current liabilities, I'm gonna explain this on the next session. So those two, I'll explain later. This one is easy. I already told you what you need to do with this. Now I'm gonna focus on step five. Now, how do we analyze current assets and current liabilities? And it's this is important. This is extremely important because knowing how to analyze current assets and current liabilities, it's gonna help you with the direct method. It's going to help you converting from cash to accrual or accrual to cash. And this is a topic that's very important. Okay, so let me show you how to analyze um, non uh, current assets and current liabilities, specifically non-cash current assets, which is we don't analyze cash because cash is what we're trying to explain. So we're going to analyze non-current non assets. And what does analyze mean? Analyze mean you compute the change from the prior period. That's all. So let's take a look at it. Then we analyze current liabilities. If current asset went up, so if the change in current asset is positive, so if current asset went up, we have an account receivable went from 1,000 to 3,000, it went up. It means cash flow went down. If current asset, if the change in current asset is down, cash flow is up. Notice they work in the opposite direction. They have an opposite relationship. So if I ask you, what is the relationship between current asset and cash flow, you would say the relationship is negative or inverse or opposite. Now, it's not only for current asset. This concept applies to all assets. So every time you're analyzing an asset other than cash, when the asset goes up, we assume that cash went down. And when the asset went down, we assume cash went up. I will explain why shortly when we look at an actual account to explain it to you. Let's look at current liabilities. If current liability went up, it means cash flow went up. If a current liability went down, it means cash flow went down. We can say that there is a positive or the same relationship. They work the same way. When one goes up, the other one goes up. When the other one goes down, the other one goes down. Now write these, write these shortcuts down. The same concept applies to all liabilities. I'll explain this for you now. Think about it for a moment. If you have a loan and from prior year, your loan went down. So if you have a loan, loan is a typical example of a liability. If you have an accounts payable, let's, let's, let's use accounts payable. If you have an accounts payable and your accounts payable went down, could you tell me why did your accounts payable go down? Well, accounts payable go down because you pay cash. It means cash went down. Same concept applies if your accounts payable went up. If your accounts payable went up, it means you are not using cash. You are using credit to buy your material, to buy your goods, to buy your services. If you're not using cash, it means cash is going up. So hopefully this is current liabilities is easier to explain than assets, but I'm going to explain assets shortly. But think about it from a loan perspective. If your loan goes down, if you have a loan and it went down, the balance went down. The reason it went down because you paid it down it means your cash went down. If you have a loan and your loan balance went up, what do we assume? We assume that you borrowed more money. Okay, same concept applies to all liability. Now, let's apply what we just learned on our company. So let's go back and this is what we have. This is what we have for this company. So we're gonna first analyze account receivable. Then we're gonna analyze accounts payable. So for this example, it's very straightforward and simple. We only have one current asset and one current liability, and they both went up. Now, what did I tell you? If a current asset went up, it means cash went down. If current asset went up, it means cash went down. Okay, and we'll explain why. Okay, let, let's, exp let's explain why. So we have the beginning balance of account receivable is zero. The ending balance is 36. This zero and this 36, both of these came from the balance sheets, from the competitive balance sheet. We have the, this is the prior year, and this is 
the current year ending balance. So the prior year started with zero and the current year ended with 36. Now we know from the income statement, this revenue came from the income statement. We know revenue was 125,000. Well, every time we have revenue, we debit account receivable. Okay, so if we so this is coming from the income statement. So if the balance was zero, we debited account receivable one twenty five. We must have have received eighty nine thousand from customers. How did I know this? So this is basically I a plug or not plug? It's computed. I computed this from a T account perspective. So what I did, I said my beginning balance is zero. I know that I increase account receivable by 125 because my revenue went up by 125, but my balance and receivable is 36. It means I receive from customers 89,000. Now this analysis is very important for the direct method. So just, we're gonna go over the direct method again. I just wanted to show it to you here because that's gonna be very beneficial. Okay. But what does that mean? Remember what I told you, the increase in account receivable is deducted every time account receivable went up, it means cash flow went down. So let's start with the cash flow statement. We start with net income. Remember step one is net income. So net income is 34,000 coming from the income statement. If you go back to the income statement, net income is 34,000. Then you start to make adjustment to reconcile net income to net cash flow provided by operating activities. You analyze account receivable and you notice account receivable went up. It means it's a negative. So we deduct, we deduct 36,000 from 34,000. Why? Because we did sell 125. So our total sales was 125, but we only received 89,000 in cash. It means the remainder of the sale is 36,000. It means of the 125,000 in sales, 36 is non cash and remember I need to eliminate any non-cash revenues and this is a non-cash revenue so the 36,000 it's still a revenue but it's a non-cash revenue I did not receive the cash I only received how much cash I only received 89,000 my, my revenue was 125 from the income statement but I only received 89,000 okay all what I have to do is find the difference in the beginning balance and the ending balance and if account receivable went up it means I received less cash Okay, and what I do is 34,000 and I deduct 36,000. Now, the same concept applies to all other current liabilities. You will do the same thing for all other current liabilities. You analyze them. If they went up, you deduct them from net income. If they went down, you add them to net income and we'll work a year two and a year three example for this company. Let's analyze accounts payable. Accounts payable went up by $5,000. Remember, the prior balance was zero and it went up to 5,000 because all the prior balance for this company were zero. Well, when accounts payable increase, it means expenses on an accrual basis exceeds those on a cash basis. What does that mean? If your accounts payable are going up, if your accounts payable are going up, think about it for a moment. You are buying on credit. Okay, you are buying on credit. Let's assume, let's assume you have um, $50,000 of expenses just for the sake of the illustration and I know your accounts payable went up by 5,000 it means of the 50,000 5,000 was non-cash you did not pay for it it means 45,000 was cash okay this is what it means if your accounts payable went up now if you have expenses of 50,000 and your accounts payable went down it means you had expenses of 50,000 and you paid down your payable that's an additional cash decrease okay but all we have to do again if accounts payable went up it means it's a positive to your cash therefore let's complete the second step in this cash flow statement remember we start with net income we have no gain no losses for this example we have no depreciation, none of that. And then we account receivable increase. We deducted it. Accounts payable increase. We added. Remember, if a liability went up, that's a positive to our cash. Therefore, we'll take 34,000 minus 36 plus 5. The net amount is 3,000. Therefore, net cash provided by operating activities is 3 thousand dollar now we don't have any other current assets or current liabilities to analyze but if we had any other current liabilities we will use the same concept if a liability went up it's a positive if a liability went down it's negative 
And the purpose what we're doing this is to eliminate any non-cash expenses and any non-cash revenues. Okay. Now let's finish the third step, which is determining the uh, net cash in, uh, net cash flow from investing and financing. Let's take a look at the balance sheet again. Um, there's no long-term assets. We really don't have any investing for this example. Financing, we have common stock of 60000 And remember, we paid dividend. They told us they paid dividend. They declared and paid dividend of 14000 Okay. So notice there is no investing section. So we finished this. We already finished operating. For this section, we only have financing. So issuings of common stock. We, we sold common stock. We received cash. That's positive to cash. Then... We are told that we pay dividend of 14,000. So dividend is a payment, is a finance. When you pay dividend, so pay, when you pay dividend, it's financing. If you receive dividend, so if you receive dividend because you invest in another company, if you receive dividend, receiving dividend is an operating, but paying is investing. So notice the net cash, net cash provided by financing is 46. 46. So cash from operating is 3,000. Cash from financing is 46. We net them plus 49. 49 plus zero, which is the beginning cash, equal to 49,000. Now we explain the increase in cash of 49,000. 3,000 of it come, came from operating activities. 46,000 of it came from financing activities. Both they result in an increase of cash of 49,000. So what we did is we just completed year one. We just completed year one, year one, uh, year one uh, balance, uh, year one cash flow statement. Let's look at year two. Okay, so this is the complete cash flow. You know, we started with net income, analyze current assets and current liabilities. That's the only thing we had for operating. Uh, no investing, we had financing, this is a complete one, okay? Now let's take a look at year two. So those, this is what we have for year two to work with. This is what we have for year two to work with. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and capture this on another screen, and we're gonna do this statement together, and actually you should pause and work it yourself first, but if you want to, we can do it together. So let me go ahead. And we'll work this year too. So this was, now this is the prior year. Now this is the prior year. So this is the, let me just capture this again one more time. Okay, let's capture it. Okay. Okay. So now this is the prior year and this is the current year. So this is the comparative balance sheet and you are giving an income statement and you are giving uh, additional information. So that's what we need to complete a cash flow statement. So the first thing we have to do is to start with net income. Whatever net income is, this is our starting point in any in any. Problem. So let's go ahead and start with net income. What is our net income for this for this example? Our net income is one hundred and thirty-four thousand. One hundred and thirty-four thousand. So let's start with that. One hundred and thirty-four thousand. So we say net income. I will do the. Uh, I will do the. Uh, I will start here and I will abbreviate. I'm done with step one. Net income, one hundred and thirty-four thousand. My step one is done. Step two. Step two was add any gains, deduct any losses. I'm sorry, um, deduct any gains, add any losses. I don't have, I'm just going to put it down, just kind of no gain, no losses for this example. How did I know no gain and no losses? I looked at my income statement. I have no gain and no losses. Therefore, I don't have to worry about this. This is step two and step three. Step four was add any non-cash expenses such as depreciation, amortization, write down, so on and so forth. If I inspect my income statement, I have depreciation expense of 21,000. So add depreciation expense of 21,000. Okay, I'm done with that step. Now step five is analyze current assets and current liabilities specifically non-cash current assets and non-cash current liabilities. Well, let's take a look at what we have. 
Cash is, I don't have to, you know, cash is, you don't analyze because you're trying to explain that 12,000 decrease in cash. Let's start with account receivable. Let me highlight account receivable. Account receivable went from 36 to 26. So account receivable, we can say it went down, went down. So decrease in AR. There was a decrease of 10,000. Ten, AR is an asset. If we have less account receivable, it means we received more money. So that's plus 10,000. When account receivable goes down, it means we collected more cash than we sold on account. We collected more cash than we sold on account. How did I know I collected more cash? My account receivable went down. My prepaid went from zero to 6,000. My prepaid went up. So I had an increase in prepaid. Prepaid is a current asset. Now think about it. How do I acquire prepaid? Well, I have to pay for them. It means I had to pay $6,000. It means my, my cash went down by $6,000. So I'm going to put these pluses and parentheses negative. So land, land is not a current asset. I'm pretty much done with my current assets because land is an investing activity. It's a property, plant, and equipment. Let's take a look at my liabilities. I have accounts payable. Accounts payable went from 5,000 to 40,000. It means my accounts payable went, my accounts payable went up. My accounts payable went up by 35,000. Well, I have an increase in a liability. It means I have more cash. So it's plus 35,000. Now, any other current liabilities? No, because bond is, bond is long term. So I'm done with I'm done with my operating activities. Now, what do I have to do? I have to net it. So 135 plus 21 plus 10 minus 6 plus 35 equal to 194,000. So that's net cash provided by operating activities. So from operating the business, I generated $194,000 in cash. Notice, way more than what my accrual net income. And the reason is, Part of the reason is that accounts payable. I was, I was, I was, uh, I was operating the business and not paying for my goods. I was borrowing. How did I know I was borrowing? My accounts payable went up. So I'm done with the operating activity. I'm done with the operating activity of the cash flow statement. Now let's move on to the second, which is the second, the second, the second uh, part is investing. Investing. Now, investing, I have to analyze my uh, long-term assets, which is land, building, accounts like that. Okay, let's take a look at my land. So now I'm focusing. I'm focusing on land. I'm focusing on building. I'm focusing on equipment. Okay. Now notice accumulated depreciation, the, 20, the 11 and the 10. I already accounted for those because 11 plus 10 equal to 21. So the accumulated depreciation, in a way, I accounted for those. And it's always good to double check. Make sure your increase in accumulated depreciation equal to your depreciation expense. Sometimes they don't equal because you sold an asset. We'll work an example later on to deal with this, but make sure they equal to each other. So let's go back and highlight what we need to analyze. And they're all increases. They are all increases. Now, it's also important to read the additional information. Okay, the company declared and paid dividend. That's financing. The company obtained one hundred and fifty thousand through the issuance of long-term debt. That's borrowing. That's financing. Land, building, and equipment were acquired for cash. So notice, let number uh, letter C. It says everything was acquired was acquired paying cash. Well, that's easy. I purchased land, and it's all cash. How did I know it's all cash? They told me right here, it's all cash. I purchased land. It was seventy thousand dollar. That's negative. I purchased building. That was $200,000. It's all cash. That's negative. I purchased equipment. $68,000. So all in all, those are the three activities because I don't have any other investments. All in all, I paid, if I net them, so that's net net cash used net cash used from investing
by investing activities, by investing. And if I add them, they'll add up to 330, 338,000. So notice from operating, I did, I, I brought 194,000, but investing, I spent 338,000. I still have to do financing now. The financing part. Remember, financing, I have to analyze long-term debt and equity. Okay. So basically, I'm done with land. I'm done with building. Okay. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty much, I don't have to look at the asset section anymore. I'm done with the asset section. Now, all I have to do is look at bonds, common stock, and retained earnings. Okay. Well, bonds, they already told us right here in the problem B, and that's why you need to read the, the read those. We issued 150000 and we obtained cash. So bond issued it's 150,000 it brought us cash 150,000 plus let's look at common stock common stock 60,000 and stayed at 60,000 it didn't make any difference now they or, they already told us too in the problem that cash dividend was 18,000 payment of dividend or dividend payment that's going to be negative negative 18,000 negative 18,000 that's all what I have now let's assume before I proceed let's assume if they did not tell us cash dividend is 18,000 let's let's see if we can figure this one out without that information because sometimes you might have to do so let's analyze retained earnings retained earnings went from 20,000 to 136. So retained earning, the beginning balance was 20,000. The ending balance was 136. We know that we generated net income of 134,000. It means we have to add here 134,000. And we know that dividend reduces retained earning. So if we go 20,000 20, plus 134, that's going to give us one. 54 but the answer is 136 it means here we paid dividend of 18,000 so luckily we are giving that information but if it's not given you have to know how to compute dividend so this is the beginning retained earnings this is the ending retained earnings this is net income which is increased retained earning and dividend reduces retained earning now sometime they may give you Beginning retained earnings, ending retained earnings, and dividend. You have to find out net income. You could also do that as well. Okay? So remember, they're giving you three of the four, so you have to find the fourth. Let's go back to financing. From financing, it's if we net them, it's a positive 132,000. Okay? So we would say that it's net cash provided, net cash provided provided 132,000 and that's the third component now let's net those three components let me get my calculator here and net the three components so 194,000 minus 338 plus 132 so the net change is net 12,000 so the net let me go back to red let me do it in a different color here. This is the last component of the cash flow statement. So the net change, the net change, when I net those three items together, the net change is negative 12,000. I will take the net change and I add to it my cash January 1st, my beginning cash. My beginning cash is 49,000. Now my ending cash should be 37. Now I don't know if this is correct or not. I have to go to the balance sheet and find out if my cash is 37. And voila, my cash, my cash is 37. And this negative 12,000 here, I was able to explain it. It worked. So basically this company from operating, they had positive cash, but they invested a lot in property, plant, and equipment. And how did they come up with the other cash? They borrowed the money, 132. So what they did is they generated some money from the operation. They borrowed some money and all this money 
went into investing in the company, buying more assets in the company. Okay, now what we can do, we can work a third year example, a third year example, it will be a little bit more involved, but I want you to, let's go through it, let's go through it, because it's very important that you, you can handle this. If you can handle those examples, the third year example, then you should be good to go. Okay, so this is the cash flow statement that I just prepared for you. Okay, this is the solution for it, so you can look at it. Now, let's take a look at this example. Let's take a look at this example. And this is year three. Okay, and this is year three. Okay, so remember the prior year cash was 37. Now, year 2021, cash is 54. So, cash went up by 17,000. Our job is to now explain why the cash went up by 17,000. So, we are giving competitive balance sheet, we are giving an income statement, and we are giving a lot of additional information, which we'll need to have to spend some time on this to kind of explain this information. Okay, let's start as we, as we always start, start with the operating section. So, the operating activity we start with net income luckily net income is given to us net income is 125,000 125,000 step two add any gains um, add any losses subtract any gains let's look at the balance sheet, at the income statement na, 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 loss I have a loss of 12,000 so I sold a piece of equipment and I had a loss of two thousand dollar now I'm going to have to explain why do I add a loss of $2,000 because that's counterintuitive. Counterintuitive, it means why am I adding a loss? Isn't loss like I lost money? Why am I adding $2,000? Well, in order to understand how did work, how did this work, let's go through a journal entry. So I'm just going to, uh, let's go through the journal entry. Okay. So. Uh, let's see if that information is given to us. Cost of 166. Okay. Equipment with a cost of 41 and a book value of 36 was sold for 34,000 cash. So here they're telling us where the loss came from. Okay, so you have to read the note. So let me journalize this entry for you. If I have an equipment with a cost of 41, book value of 36, and I sold it for 34, what's the entry? Well, the entry is this. I debit cash. I debit my cash, I debit my cash, 34,000, I credit my equipment, because I got rid of this equipment, it has a cost of 41, I credit my equipment of 41,000, and if I credit equipment, I also have to debit accumulated depreciation, because, because I have to get rid of accumulated depreciation. Now, how much is accumulated depreciation? They told me my book value is 36. So it means if it has a cost of 41 and a book value of 36, it means I removed 5,000 of accumulated depreciation. Why? Because you need to know this. Book value equal to cost minus accumulated depreciation. I have the cost of 41. They told me the book value is 36. So I must have, I must have 5,000 of accumulated depreciation. Now the entry does not balance. Uh, I'm still missing a loss. So this is a loss of 2,000. I debit a loss of 2,000. Okay, so this is the entry loss on sale, loss on sale of equipment. So this is the entry that I made when I, when I sold this asset. So I debited loss on sale, okay? In case you're wondering, why is it a loss? Because I received $34,000 cash for an asset with a book value of 36. The book value of 36. I receive less cash than the book value. I have a loss of 2000 Just in case you're also wondering, why is it a loss? Because I received less cash than the book value. You should know this. But anyway, now you know it. Now, notice this $2,000 went to the income statement. Now, did we lose $2,000 in cash? Not at all. If anything, we received cash from this transaction, we received cash of 34,000. But the loss 
goes on the income statement, it reduced our net income. So the loss reduced net income. So the loss reduced net income by 2000 without reducing our cash by 2000. What does that mean? It means we have what we have to do since we started with net income 125, we had to add back that loss that reduced our net income because remember, we have to eliminate any non cash expenses. Think of a loss as a non cash expense. It reduced our net income without reducing our without reducing our cash. And the opposite applies to gain. A gain increase our net income without increasing our cash. So if we had a gain, we would subtracted the gain for the same reason. I'm going to subtract gain of zero because we have no gain. But since it's in case we had any gain, we deduct the gain. So we went step one, step two, and step three. Step four, uh, when we have to add any depreciation, um, any depreciation, any depreciation, amortization, any non-cash expenses. Okay, so let's see. Let's take a look at the income statement, cost of goods sold, operating expenses, interest, loss. It doesn't look there is the depreciation, but uh, we might be given depreciation indirectly. So let's see. So since depreciation expense is not listed here, let's read because here it's it's very important to read the notes. Operating expenses include depreciation of 33. There you go. All right, so we have 33 of depreciation. So we're going to add depreciation of 33,000. Okay, that's why you have to read the notes. That's why. So, so the depreciation is sitting right here in this 221. So we did the depreciation. Now we have to analyze current assets and current liabilities. Let's identify the current assets. Account receivable, inventory, and prepaid. We have three current assets and we only have one current liability. Now we're going to have to analyze the changes, which is it's already done for you here, but we have to see how how do they all fit. So account receivable went down, went from 26 to 48. Good. It's a decrease. Account receivable going down. It means I have more cash. I have 42,000 more cash. I collected 42,000 more cash. My inventory went up up increase in inventory if i increase in inventory it means i'm buying more inventory why do i have more inventory i'm either buying or selling less anyway it's an asset and it's increasing therefore i'm gonna have to reduce my cash again think of inventory it's either going up i am buying more inventory or think of it, I'm not selling. Either or, my cash is going down. But think of it, I'm buying more inventory than the prior period. And indeed, I went from 0 to 54. I'm buying more inventory. Now you might be saying, what if I buy this inventory on account? No worries. We're going to worry about on account when we analyze accounts payable. Prepaid went from four th for, from 6000 to 4000 Now, the prepaid, there was a decrease in prepaid. Well, if an asset, if a current asset goes down, that's positive to cash. Let me explain this for you. Prepaid. If a prepaid goes down, it means the prepaid is being expensed. And what, what entry do we make when the prepaid is expensed? When the prepaid is expensed, we debit an expense. Whatever that expense is, let's assume we prepaid our rent. We debit prepaid rent. We debit rent expense and we credit prepaid rent. Let's assume this was for 2000 2000 so notice our prepaid overall went down by 2000 notice it means we increased our expenses but this is not cash okay so remember we paid for the prepaid in the prior year now we're using it as we're using it it means we are saving cash now that's why if a prepaid is if it's a decrease in prepaid it means positive to cash now let's analyze the liabilities current liabilities went from 40000 to 33000 now a decrease in AP. Well, if it is a decrease, it means it's a decrease in cash. It means I'm paying down my liability. And that's basically everything for um, for the operating section. So I'm going to net all these out. 125 plus 33 plus 2 plus, uh, plus 42 minus 54 plus 2 minus 7. And at, at 125 equal to 59 thousand and this is my net cash provided by operating activities so notice my net income was 125 but cash wise 
I was only I only generated 59,000 which is opposite of the prior year the prior year my net cash provided was higher okay so I'm basically done with my operating activity so I just I can just X these out I don't need them anymore now I'm gonna focus on my I'm gonna do investing I'm gonna focus on my investing investing section under the investing section I have to analyze my land my building so on and so forth let's start with land land went from 70 to 45 land went down building since there's no change in building basically it's non-existent I don't have to worry about it I did already took care of depreciation but I might have I, mean, I already took care of depreciation my equipment went from 68 to 193 my my equipment did change so so operating expenses included we, we took care of letter a okay land was sold at its book value for cash b look at letter b here it means we sold the land and we sold it exactly for book value it means there was no gain no loss on the sale well let's think about it land went from 70 to 45 it means we sold twenty five thousand dollar worth of land sold land and as a result because i sold the land i have a positive twenty five thousand so we sold a piece of land that's worth twenty five thousand so we're done with the land equipment went up now we need to see if there's anything about equipment so we're done with b cash dividend of fifty five thousand that's financing the interest expense of twelve thousand was paid in cash we'll take we took care of that Equi we took care of that in a sense that it was already included in net income equipment with a cost of 166 was purchased for cash what does that mean it means we purchase a piece of equipment and we paid for it 166 equipment purchased negative 166 equipment with a cost of 41 and a book value of 36 was sold for 34,000 sold equipment sold equipment for 34 that's positive okay then bonds that's financing common stock is financing I'm pretty much done with my investing let me net them out 25 plus minus 166 plus 34 it's negative 107 again I'm still growing the company I'm still investing so net cash used by investing still negative okay that's the second component of the cash flow statement 107 the third component so pretty much e is out i can x out e2 e is i already took care of this i can x out a i can x out b because those are ready to care of them d2 because interest expense is an operating activity it's done okay so now what i'm left with is my financing section financing financing let's start by looking at basically assets I don't have to worry about assets anymore bonds payable bonds went from 150 to 110 it was a decrease I paid down my bonds by 40,000 it means cash went down but let's make sure bonds were redeemed at their book value it means when I when I sold back my bond when I bought back my bond I bought them exactly at book value no gain and no loss well if that's the case redemption of bond I redeemed my bond I bought them back redemption of bonds and I paid 40,000 because they were exactly bought back at no gain and no loss for 40,000 I'm done with letter F and I'm done with my bonds common stock went from 60 to 220 an increase of 160 look at letter G it says common stock was issued for cash it means this whole thing was issued for cash good it means I brought cash of 160,000 sale of common stock 160 plus 160 that's good and the only thing that's left is dividend and it's giving to you right here cash dividend of 55,000 dividend paid or payment of dividend that's negative 55,000 okay now I'm ready to net my financing activities let's net them out minus 40 plus 160 minus 55 will give me positive 
65 and that's cash provided from financing I'm still I'm still relying on financing okay so that's the third component so what happened in this company in this company we generated fifty nine thousand dollar in cash and that fifty nine thousand in the sixty five thousand all the money that we made and all the money that we borrowed went into growing the business went into growing the business now we're not done with the cash flow statement now we need to net we need to net them out we need we need to net those straight so 59 plus 107 minus and 65 plus we net them out we net them out the net change we have to compute the net change the net change is a net increase of seventeen thousand net increase of seventeen thousand let's make sure we got it we go back to the cash flow statement cash increase of seventeen thousand notice here cash is increase of seventeen thousand went from thirty seven to fifty four so that's good now what I have to do uh, is I have to add add to the increase cash January first cash January first was thirty seven so 17 plus 37 that's going to give me cash december 31st which is 54,000, and it worked okay now is it possible that you might see something like this on the cpa exam it's very possible but but not likely that you would have to complete a full full um full cash flow statement i mean it, everything is possible but i highly doubt that you might have to complete maybe an operating section or you might have to complete maybe you, you might have to complete this part here or you might have to complete the whole thing but it will not be as many transaction as as i as i just showed you hopefully it's not okay but you have to be ready to answer a multi lot of multiple choice questions and we'll, we'll work on this in the next session we'll answer multiple choice questions remember we need comparative balance sheet we need to analyze retained earning if needed remember retained earning looks something like this we have a beginning the beginning should be giving if, if the balance sheet is given beginning retained earning and the ending retained earning should be given remember net income will increase retained earning and dividend will decrease retained earnings so those are the four components and you need to include all the changes that have passed through the cash that have resulted in an increase or a decrease in cash so we need all this information we need any information about write down amortization charges similar book entries such as depreciation that they have no cash effect sometimes we need to be aware of those okay and this is a summary of uh, of my steps i really like my steps but this is a summary for all the steps that i uh, that i that i showed you basically you will start with net income those are the five steps um you know you add depreciation expense amortization amortization of discount those are more details so if you have any amortization okay depreciation amortization if you have any increase in deferred income tax liability this is current liability going up you add okay those are additions those are all addition you add any losses i already told you this decrease in receivable it's a current asset current asset i already told you about all these rules current asset current liability current liability and what you deduct I already went over the rules as well okay again this is the same thing that i just showed you earlier now the best way to, to to really see if you understand what we just what we just went over we're going to go over a series of multiple choice questions to test your knowledge again this is a lot of information i understand it's, ch it's challenging but if you understand this this is a very extremely important topic on the exam you get this under control you increase your chances of passing and you cannot pass if you don't know how to complete a statement of cash flow which is in turn it's going to help you with the cash to accrual adjustments as well as always i would like to remind you if you have any questions about this recording please let me know and don't forget to visit my website for headlectures.com for additional lectures and resources and i strongly suggest consider subscribing it's an investment in your career and study hard for your cpa exam this topic is covered heavily